Communicate in less than a second with Nextel Walkie Talkie. Nice work. The largest and fastest push-to-talk network on the planet. That's getting it done at Sprint Speed. Visit Sprint.com slash Nextel. Plenty of championship memorabilia in the stands. Philadelphia and Los Angeles hoping to wear those championship t-shirts in 07. Philadelphia has the halftime lead. Warrior telestration time. Quint Kesnick breaking down some defense. Here's a saying for you on defense. You gotta have your big eye on your man, your little eye on the ball. The ball is up top right here with Matt Striebel. And he will isolate behind the goal is Springer. Springer's gonna position himself in a really good spot. Springer's man is right here, and you can see the head's on a swivel. He's looking, but he's got that second double team responsibility. Bice steps up field, and watch Springer then. Curls from around the goal. He's all alone, and he scores. Bice got caught staring upfield. His head was not on a swivel. Philadelphia hits pay dirt as a result. The barrage and the riptide. Plenty of riptide supporters in the stands, including the Watson family there, as the chase for the Major League Championship trophy continues. Quarter three in a moment. Introducing the all-new Helio Fin. It's the thinnest folder with a 3-megapixel camera. You can capture the action and instantly send your pictures to Flickr and your movies to YouTube. All in record speed over a super-fast 3G network. The new Helio Fin, built by Samsung. Supercharged by Helio. Check it out at Helio.com. Breaking news from our special agent, Aaron E. Shurns. Time-wasting auto insurance is trying to take over the world. People waste their free time to take care of their auto insurance. Is everyone affected? Not insurance policyholders. They're doing fine. That's because insurance makes auto insurance easy. Time-wasting auto insurance loses power when it hears quote by print instantly at insurance. Take that! Make it your mission to save time and money on auto insurance. Get your quote from insurance.com today. Philadelphia has the advantage prior to the start of quarter number three in this NB Zip Championship game on ESPN, presented by the U.S. Marine Corps. Joe Beninati and Quint Kesnick with you from Paytech Park today. We are enjoying a terrific championship match, and we assumed that we would. All through the summer, it was a summer filled with highlights and great offensive plays. None better than starting with John Grant Jr. of the Rochester Rattlers. 71 points during the regular season, eclipsing a mark set by Casey Powell. This season started with Long Island and Washington off to great starts. They were hot out of the gate at 4-1. And, and so was the Washington Bayhawks. They got out to a 4-2 and two start, but hit the skids late in the season. Then Rochester started to roll. They went on a franchise record eight-game win streak. And we caught a great game. Rochester beating Denver 27-26 in overtime, the highest scoring game in league history. Then the Riptide. In Southern California, they would really heat up and start flying. Late season heroics from Graham Gill and Michael Watson. They land themselves in the playoffs. Denver, they make the coaching change. Jim Beardmore out as associate head coach then to Brian Reese, and then it would be the Outlaws who got their game in order. Last year they played for the championship. This year they played in front of 20,000 on July 4th in Invesco Field. That franchise is a star of this league. But it all comes back to experience. At the end of the summer, the defending champs, the Philadelphia Barrage, we're ready to defend. Ryan Boyle in the most balanced team in the league. Got Andy Corno taking faceoffs. We got Doc between the pipes. And maybe the league's best coach in Tony Resch. 
And there is Resch, and he has built an offense-defense system in Philadelphia that really echoes what you're seeing in college lacrosse, where midfielders don't play on both sides of the field. What John Tucker's trying to do in L.A. Uh, is play seamless lacrosse from offense to defense, and they have not scored in transition, and that's why they are down 9-6. to six. Nice crowd here at Paytech Park in Rochester. This facility seats 13,000, a new facility shared by the Rochester Rhinos soccer team. John Tucker and GW Mix. GW Mix, the general manager of the team that Brian Doherty's squad is squaring off. They wanted to put a team together and have it all be about chemistry. Mickey Jarbo, an inspirational leader. John Tucker says Jarbo plays his best when he plays fired up. Well, he's going to have to get fired up right now. The Navy pilot, he's a helicopter pilot. Actually, he trains other youngsters out of flight school on how to fly helicopters. Opening draw, fast break time for the barrage, and it was short-circuited by D.J. Nice Driscoll. Nice Joe Beninati, Quint Kessnick with you as we continue on with this championship game from Rochester, New York. The first time these two teams have tangled this summer, East meets West for the whole ball of wax. My gut feeling is that LA has great fitness. They're young, they're fast, they're all in good shape. But Philadelphia is a team with the lead that's extremely dangerous because they manage the game so well. So I think if LA is gonna make a run, it's gotta occur with, you know, less, they can't leave themselves with too much to do late, is what I'm trying to say. Krosner picks it up, force feeding inside for Goldberg. He took his eyes off of it. And Graham Gill comes to the rescue for Los Angeles. The Naval Academy midshipman. Very well represented on this Los Angeles squad. Gill lost it in transition. Strebel will streak to the offensive end and whistle one wide. As far as those Navy grads are concerned, fear the goat, right, was the T-shirt being worn by GW Mix before the uh, game today. John Bursner. Navy class of 06 is also on their roster. He is away in the Middle East right now, being deployed. Colsey, who led the league in game-winning goals, picked up another one yesterday. Strebel fired one wide. You think about all these ex-Naval Academy athletes out there, someone like Mickey Jarbo, who's done tours of combat duty in South America and in the Middle East, flying helicopters. This is Jarbo right here, spearheading the break for Los Angeles. J.J. Morrissey, not taking advantage of the numbers advantage just yet. This is a slow break. Morrissey pulls the trigger. Bullseye. L.A. is 14 wins and only four losses when J.J. Morrissey has been in the lineup. They picked him up a year ago during the midseason when they were in a horrendous losing streak. Well, they put J.J. Morrissey in the lineup and they win five straight games. And that was coming off Morrissey's senior season at Virginia where the Cavaliers were 17-0. So for a stretch there, Morrissey had won 23 straight games. There were some questions, could he fit into the MLL? Did he, you know, did he fit into the system? Well, in L.A., J.J. Morrissey is the system. J.J. Morrissey in his second season, Quint, in the big leagues, a history teacher in Massachusetts during the weeks and come weekend time he is just a buzzsaw for this riptide team Philadelphia on top the lead is trimmed to two that LA goal didn't look like a fast break but you called it that's what's called a slow break oh! Greg Vice just annihilated Ryan Boyle always the best time to make a big hit is when a player makes a backdoor cut and Boyle beats his man he makes a back door cut but Bice was hot inside and I think Boyle's gonna have to come out of the game but Boyle's showing tremendous toughness right now he looked like he was out on his feet oh you just see that again good clean hit by Bice I give him credit because he didn't cross check and did not hit Boyle under the chin he could have absolutely taken Ryan Boyle's head off it takes more courage to actually hit a guy the right way the correct way than it does to cheap shot him with a cross check so I give Greg Bice uh, hats off because not only was that a physical uh, and just outright nasty play, but it was done the right way. And three cheers for Ryan Boyle, who under his own power made his way to the Philadelphia sideline. The man nicknamed the Bite Scream Man has the ball right now. John Lindsay will work together. 
with Wes Green. Green with that good stride, getting a step on Burns. Green, somewhat of a surprise, 14 goals during the regular season. No surprise to see Watson do extremely well. Then there's Spencer Ford, the man with the ball right now, seven in the white, who set a new league record for assists. Opening up, Green goes behind the back, and Doc read it well. Brian Doherty beaten there, however. It is Matt Casey with a rocket. This is where LA's youth and energy are gonna show up. This team, part of the West Coast lifestyle is being fit all year long, and these guys train awful hard. They are in tremendous shape, and that's gonna pay dividends late in the ball game, especially when it's hot out, and today it's in the 80s, and Casey spins and lifts it top shelf past the ear of Brian Doherty. Quint, as the seasons go by in Major League Lacrosse, and we're coming to the end of the seven, in Major League Lacrosse history, more and more Division Three players are rising to the forefront. Back to the X on the draw. A face-off that was controlled there by Chris Pazanka, flagged down. Corno came up, then he got level. Well, here, here's the deal about the, uh, basically the mathematics of lacrosse right now. The Division One level due to Title IX is not growing. We've got uh, slightly over 50 schools that play Division One lacrosse. What is growing at rapid levels are the supporting schools, the high schools across this country. I mean, in California right now, you got over 200 teams playing sanctioned varsity lacrosse. The game is growing basically 20% a year at the high school level. Division One opportunities are not increasing, hence players now coming from Division Three schools like Matt Casey playing in Major League Lacrosse. Sweeney and Watson, Division I stalwarts at Georgetown and Virginia, respectively. Jazz Woodson gone 30 seconds for the push. Philadelphia has the power play, and Los Angeles has reeled them back in within one. Mike Springer finds the open man, and it's Goldberg from the sharp angle with no mistake. Goldberg proving that accuracy is as important as power. Sets his feet, Springer hits him right in the target, and then Goldberg, nice and easy, just fires this one to that far post, knowing that from about eight yards, there's no way that Jarbo can get it. And so just a perfect example of how your accuracy, and that's what you want to work on against the wall or in your backyard, in your goal, against your goal. Goldberg with a hat trick. He used to be the best offensive player at Yale University, and he has been a wonderful increase to the Philadelphia offensive attack as the summer has gone along. Coming over after a mid-season acquisition. Early stages of quarter number three. Live on ESPN2 and available in high definition. This is Justin Smith on the run. Smith cleaned out again by Vice. Off the restart, it's Springer. Powerful man turns the corner. Vice stays topside very well. Roy Colsey picked his team up at the half yesterday when they were trailing. Skims this one wide of the cage. Shot clock at 10. Ryan Boyle back in the game. Donnelly draws a bead on him. Boyle with that little question mark move behind the back and Jarbo got it with the hands. Belial with a ground ball. The bad outlet pass, Smith inside, Boyle stashes it away. That hurts. We saw Doherty throw a sloppy outlet pass early in this ball game. And you know, one thing you have, you have 20 seconds to clear. And, and Belial kind of panics and throws this up the near side, and that's where all the traffic is. If in doubt, run to space and always go through your goaltender. Boyle is the beneficiary, but if Belial could do that play again, I think he carries that ball into the corner and looks cross field, the, the far side, like in soccer, exit out the far side, use the crossing pass. Anthony Kelly using his muscle to try and overpower Andy Corno. Look at that battle at the faceoff X. This is going to be withholding, and it's going to be L.A. ball. Philadelphia has the lead by three. This is quarter number three. Ryan Boyle with two goals and an assist this afternoon. We need to step away. Tony Resch barking out encouragement to his charges. Stay with us. Plenty more to come. An afternoon of lacrosse on ESPN2.
I gotta tell you, it was really a great value. The bed was really comfortable, the pillows were soft, lots of pillows. The pool was great. The pool was fun. And you gotta love that free breakfast. My mom liked it, my grandma liked it, my little brother liked it. <laughs> Play Mystery Hotspot to win a dream vacation, $10,000 and more at daysin.com. We will stand and fight. This is madness. This is Sparta! 300, now on demand. Turned out to be a lovely day for championship lacrosse in Rochester, New York. Philadelphia has the lead 11-8. 14 different goal getters, but that man, Seth Goldberg, has three on the day. Polly Sy major out of Yale, grew up in Syracuse, actually played a season right here for the Rochester Rattlers. Does such a great job of getting himself open in front. I thought in the semifinals he was a bit snake bit, but right there you see the great accuracy. Setting his feet first, getting those hands in, in the shooting spot, Presenting a target. Lacrosse is a visual game. You got to present a target so your teammate hits you right in the stick head. He scored more than 30 goals for the Rattlers last year. Head coach in Philly, Tony Rice, said we knew a lot about him and wanted him when the chance presented itself. And they brought him onto the roster and he has been a godsend. Oh, Philly Tim. lost BJ Prager, Joe. That's why they brought him on. The inside man. Wes Green, who hails from Australia, skims that one from down under and high and wide. By yourself, kid. Moving towards the seven minute mark of quarter number three, Philadelphia and Los Angeles. In the NBZ Championship game, the end of the Major League Cross summer of 2007. Downing on the run, no worries for Doherty. Spencer Ford with a good ground ball. Inside, downing again. That's all about the hard work of Spencer Ford. He got fouled by Seglia. It's a slashing violation against Philly, but Ford just refusing to quit. Back there on that end line, comes up with the grounder and a little pass. Doc is shaken up. But well, here's the ground ball play right there. It doesn't look like much. Ford stays with it. He gets fouled by Seglia, and next thing you know, there's a matchup problem. No one's on Downing, and Downing flashes to the near post. Good little two-man play, but it starts with ground ball play. I don't care whether you're a youth league player, a middle school age, or high school, or college. Ground balls win games. Ryan Doherty's team's going to be a man short. Joe Seglia sent to the penalty box. A minute for the slash. So Los Angeles has a chance to draw near once more. Remember, in Major League Lacrosse, there is a two-point arc. It is set 16 yards from the cage. We've seen two-point goal scoring beat a, a bit down this summer. And you wouldn't think that a one-yard difference would make all that much, but it has. Spencer Ford loves to work on the inside. Michael Watson, that low buzz bomb hit to the defender in front. Gill with a bounce pass back for Watson again, and Doherty shuttled over to get to the post. We're down. Watch Watson, Kev. Ryan Doherty Ryan's ball. Ryan's ball. telling his team to pay careful attention to this man, the acrobatic Michael Watson, rolling away from Cassis. Sets his feet, hit the underside of the crossbar with a dart. Watson has the uncanny ability with that elevator shot to be so accurate. Listen. Ping, that's Watson from the wing. 90 miles an hour plus. Downing shifting gears. Graham Gill tries the sidewinder and he missed it. Spencer Ford, relentless. This Riptide team. Tony Resch said they love to push the pace, put the pressure on. He had to get his veteran team ready for that. Back to even strength, six on six. Gill was held inside. Reardon spins and scores. 
so many young players are counseled to learn to play with both hands, right-handed and left-handed. But Terry Reardon's a great example of a guy who's basically about 90% left-handed, and this is one he could have caught righty and shot, but watch him catch this lefty, spin away from traffic, and beat Doherty downstairs. Great pass by Graham Gill, really the playmaker. Reardon gets the credit with the finish, and that's what he is paid to do. Four-time All-American out of Johns Hopkins University in Baltimore. Back in the mid-90s, he was the player of the year in college lacrosse. This is Major League Lacrosse across today, Reardon has bagged another postseason hat trick. Along with Quint Kestick, I'm Joe Beninati. A tip of the cap and thanks to all the men and women in our crew working in Rochester today. We have a real good one shaping up. 11-10 for Philly. Terry Reardon's a guy who lives in LA. He's working in New York City right now. On Broadway, a play called The Ritz where he plays a private detective. He said about the whole audition process, I, I didn't fly 3,000 miles to stink up my audition. He compared it a lot to playing in sports. And congratulations to Terry for landing uh, such, a, such a big part. I know he's always dreamed about being a big time actor. Good for you, Terry. He'll be imposing on stage too, right? At 6'5 and 220. Los Angeles in the white with Wes Green in charge. Off the split dodge, that pass to the inside was knocked away by Moyer. Hard charging Brian Spolina boots it into the offensive half, but out of bounds. It'll be LA ball. That was a potential collision of the century with Spolina and Bice coming to uh, together there by the sideline. Could have been some seismic activity on the Richter scale. <laughs> Gill, who has had a wonderful season. Woodson from the outside, that was partially blocked. Graham Gill has had five different games this year where he scored more than four goals. I think Woodson needs to be more of a factor right now with LA's offense. Michael Watson looking for Reardon. Backed up by Sean Lindsay. Shot clock ticks down to 10. Lindsay gets it in gear. Watson being knocked down to the turf, and Doc took that one right in the chest. Ryan Doherty, who won Major League Lacrosse's Goalie of the Year honors for the third time this summer, kick starts the breakout. Kevin Cassis will clear it. Cassis will slow the tempo. John Tucker expected Philadelphia to be methodical today. Cassis stepping in, that pass gets away from Goldberg. It'll be claimed by Mickey Jarbo. Just less than four minutes to go in quarter three. The winner wins it all in Major League Lacrosse this summer. Casey scooting inside the arc to the alley. Double team there defensively. Easy pickings for Doc. Ryan Doherty comes up and advances to Burns. Burns looking for the four on three. Boyle got pinched by Driscoll. Hey, step out. Graham, step out. Off in the distance, you hear Mickey Jarbo begging for his defenders to put a little extra pressure on. Uh, let's go. This is Jed Prosner. Former All-American star out of North Carolina. In no particular hurry for Matt Striebel. Matchups with Colsey and Gill. Loose in front. Driscoll rakes it off the turf, right to the waiting Roy Colsey. Shot clock at 15. Colsey ready to go, he hesitates, finds the alley and sends it wide of Jarbo. Roy Colsey, who was huge yesterday for this Philadelphia team. Five seconds to work on the shot clock for Boyle. Overpowered again there by Bice. Jarbo zings it ahead. Driscoll will push. Philadelphia in the orange, a one-point leader, tail end of quarter three. Woodson missed it with that worm burner. Sport grass turf here at Paytech Park. The host venue for the NBZ championship game on ESPN. Woodson in a mid-season trade from Boston. Three hat tricks and a four bagger in the semifinals. 13 goals coming into today in five games. So he was a huge change of pace for LA and a great get for GW Mix. Probably the best GM in the league. GW and John Tucker called him the playmaker. Sharp angle work for Green. Good look, score! Downing fires for the hat trick. 
Three straight L.A. goals. Downing's got a handful, but I love the pass from the crocodile hunter, Wes Green. This Riptide team has shown the ability to bounce back throughout the summer. They were trailing by three just a couple minutes ago. Downing carved into the lead. Reardon beat Doherty. And then the youngster Downing does it again against the veteran netminder. And we are brand new at 11 on ESPN. I've got Mike Joyner here, MVP of today's Donahue Baxter wedding. Mike, quite a performance. Yeah, well, it was a team effort. Without that block from Sully, I would have never been able to watch that Chicago-St. Louis game cast. We saw there was a lot of talk between you and Sully. Care to comment? Oh, yeah, he just told me to hang in there and do what I got to do, you know? <laughs> Thank you, All Mike. Right. <laughs> Live from the Donahue Baxter wedding, back to you in studio. Be an ESPN MVP, only with VCast, Fantasy Management, Baseball Tonight Clips, Live Game Casts, and more with ESPN MVP, exclusively from Verizon Wireless. Okay, I've been working on this plan for three years, and today's the day. Okay. Every Friday, the same Bud Light delivery guy takes the same route past us. Okay. You're the only one who can make the leap. Okay. When I say go, you jump over, grab some Bud Light, and jump back. Okay. Here he comes. Okay. One, two, three, and go. What'd you say? Refreshingly smooth Bud Light. Always worth it. Seriously, what'd you say? That's cold. Review. These are the past champions in Major League Lacrosse. In 01, it began with the Lizards. Hoist that Steinfeld Cup. It weighs about 48 pounds. In 02, Gary Gate and the Baltimore Bayhawks in Columbus. Dominant Mark Millen was excellent. The Lizards come back and claim the 03 championship in sudden death. And there is Sal Acasio in Philadelphia, a team that I wrote off early in the season. Back in 05, Quint Kesnick calls these group of Bayhawks the best team ever in Major League Lacrosse. And 06, Philadelphia, the barrage behind Paul Cantabene, Roy Colsey's 10 points. They're looking for back-to-backs for that man, Tony Resch. Tony Resch has made a goaltending change here at the start of the fourth quarter. Kevin Keenan has come on for Brian Doherty. If you missed it, at the top of the telecast, we told you Brian was uh, nicked a couple of different times yesterday in the semifinals, the most pressing of which was that head injury. He missed time in the semis. He's missed time already today. He took a shot in the midsection, lower abdomen, if you will, and has now given the crease up again to Kevin Keenan. The reality of being a goalie in this league is that you're sort of like a pinata. Guys firing the lacrosse ball, which is a little heavier than most people realize at you, and you're gonna get bruised and battered. And, Doc right now on the sidelines trying to cool off. Los Angeles with a ball in the white. They've reeled in the barrage to the tune of an 11-11 draw late in quarter three. Matt Oglesby, one of the defensive midfielders for head coach John Tucker, will leave this in the capable cross of Chaz Woodson, 25-year-old Virginia native. Joe Seglia out to defend against him. Good opportunity for L.A. right now because Matt Striebel and Roy Colsey are stuck on the field playing defense. This is not the roles that they're accustomed to, and this is not Philly's. 